Hello everyone and welcome to today's webinar. My name is Adam Rector and I run the webinar program here at User Testing. Today we have Murat Yilmaz with us. Murat is the Creative Director at Fair Portal. Fair Portal has annual gross bookings of over $4 billion through its subsidiaries, which include Cheapo Air and OneTravel.com. Murat started as a designer and developer at Fair Portal before eventually moving up to Creative Director and under his leadership, the Cheapo Air website and app have won numerous industry awards over the past five years. Today, he'll be sharing Fair Portal's approach to UX and will highlight two UX projects that his team has worked on recently. Before we get started, I want to cover just a few housekeeping items. I'm going to be taking over our Twitter feed for the next hour or so. Our handle is at user testing, and we'll be using the hashtag UTWebinar. I'd love to hear any comments or insights you're getting from today's webinar. Also, we want to make today's presentation as interactive as possible, so if you have any questions for Murat, you can submit them using the GoToWebinar question box, and we'll get to them after the presentation. Uh, Murat was also nice enough to share his slides with us today. You can find those in the GoToWebinar control panel under Handouts. And most importantly, we are recording today's webinar. For everyone who registered, I'll be sending out an email on Friday with a link to the recording, so keep an eye on your inbox for that. That is it for housekeeping. Murat, I'm super excited to have you on today. How are you? Thank you, Adam. Um, thank you for hosting the webinar. And I'm great. And um, <clears throat> it's an um, <clears throat> honor to um, be having a webinar with you guys. And um, so we can get started, I think. Sure, yeah, sounds good. Uh, if, you, if I left out anything about your bio that you'd like to uh, tell everyone about, that's fine. Otherwise, you can jump straight into your presentation and uh, talk about UX at Fair Portal. Sure, sounds great. So I'll go, I have two slides for that one as well. I can um, talk about the company as well as about me a little bit. Um, and then today, uh, we're going to talk about uh, um, how the Fair Portal utilized the UI, UX, and CRO methodologies within the, um, the organization. And I will um, show you a couple of projects and our testing frameworks and uh, best practices that we do. And um, we'll wrap it up with the questions. And I'll start with the FAIR portal. Um, in a glance, if you, uh, if, you, if you look at it, it's a FAIR portal as a technology company. And then that uh, powers the uh, leading hybrid travel agencies like Cheaper, One Travel, Travelong, and a couple other brands. In total, consists of seven brands and headquarters in New York. Uh, we have seven offices around the world and over uh, 3,700 employees. And um, we serve roughly 200 uh, countries around the world. And we get uh, 21 million unique visitors um, in a month for our websites. And about me, I joined Fair Portal in um, 2008, and uh, I uh, have held various different roles, uh, ranging from the UI um, um, uh, web designer, developer role, to the uh, manager and creative director, most recently the, uh, the AVP of design. And uh, I lead the uh, design and UX teams and uh, consist of A-B testing, optimizations, uh, user testing, and uh, all the other C uh, CRO efforts under the same umbrella uh, for all our products and within the organization. I also help with the strategic planning on uh, various products. Um, uh, this is uh, roughly the, the, what we do. And um, we heavily rely on the analytics, uh, qualitative research, uh, competitive analysis, analysis, and customer feedback rate, uh, and strategy. Um, define the strategy and prioritize our uh, roadmap for the different products. And um, I'll talk about the design team function within the organization quickly. And this is, um, we uh, execute uh, many different things. And I have several uh, separate teams uh, under the same umbrella for each, each functions. So these are uh, consist of optimization, which is the A-B testing and CRO, UX uh, research and user testing, um, which we are growing this team uh, as well even further. So I'll talk about it a little bit uh, extensive on that one and the UI uh, prototyping implementation, uh, visual design who's uh, in charge of the interaction design and um, other marketing materials and so on. And we have the front end engineering uh, department within the, organ uh, the design organization. So um, I'll talk about it because I believe that design is 
how it works at the same time so that front-end engineering uh, plays a big role to deliver the great experiences. And user uh, for the QA also, <clears throat> we have a small team within the design to ensure the UAT testings are done. This is how we structure. I'm not sharing the entire org chart, but this is the functions, and we have uh, separate teams for each of the functions within the same organization. So um, in terms of the UX uh, maturity, uh, where we are at Fair Portal, so this is the uh, six uh, steps of uh, UX maturity. And if you look at it, I, I think we're at the moment at the uh, fourth step, which is committed, and uh, UX is very critical, and we have the executive support, and we're growing the um, UX even further. So our aim to get to the six, maybe uh, within a year or so, we will be uh, reaching there at the moment we are defining all the other processes and make it standard and integrating to um, our development life cycles even more tightly. So moving on to the next slide. I mentioned uh, on the webinar introduction, I think CRO and uh, uh, UX should be under the same umbrella because they really serve each other very well and um, UX patterns and change changes all over time and it needs um, user experience in a way that justify the, the user experience initiatives, the cost and uh, all the other things, just putting a dollar uh, value, the revenue numbers, by showing the uh, qualitative uh, data for all the efforts, I think. That's very critical and important. And also the good UX can convert better with the optimization. What I mean by that is um, when we um, create an experience, we can do the, uh, the user testing and uh, qualitative research and also do good um, A-B testing when the experience is developed and then compare it against and A-B testing will reveal some of the information which will enable us to um, optimize the user experience even further. And to me, the UX and CRO complete each other because two sides of the uh, great picture, qualitative and quantitative combined equals success. Moving on to uh, interaction with the in, uh, international in, internal departments with the different teams and uh, fair portal. This is how we uh, organize. I would say the design in the core and UX front end optimization comes uh, all together in the same umbrella. And we work with the shared uh, unit within the organization. These are including the business intelligence, DevOps, and uh, QA. And on top of everything, we have the products and brands. So we uh, work very closely. And I will talk about uh, how is the, um, the, and on the next slide, user uh, lifecycle, user experience, and uh, software development lifecycle at Fair Portal. So um, we embrace the Lean UX within the organization, and uh, we do um, research and the different stage of the development. If you look at it here, the starting point, uh, clear need, and the uh, end point, there is no end because the continuous cycle. And um, we have different roles within the organization, brand manager, product manager, UX, and design development team, QA, and optimization testing. For these, each stages, we have uh, total collaboration and um, working together with the, all the other um, team members and the teams to create a great software and uh, um, user experience. If you go through the steps, I think the clear need is the first one, research and observe, where we utilize the UX um, the most, and um, prioritize insight that comes next, the brainstorming concept and forming the hypothesis. Moving on the experiment where we do both um, A-B testing experiment or um, user testings in general. And then based on the learnings, we revise our hypotheses and then continue building the actual and um, product continuously testing it in the multiple different stages where we have the explore laid up there. So um, the continuous cycle, and we're trying to integrate it as tightly as possible with the um, development life cycle. Moving on to, um, I included this slide because I think it's just, it's, it's important to have a, a proper uh, and uh, purposeful approach to the testing. This is including um, usability and A/B testing. 
first and most important thing, we identify the current uh, bottlenecks and define success. We need to know um, if you look at it as an e-commerce website, uh, where is the abandonment most um, happening? And then we can focus on their use, uh, analyzing the data from the analytic tools. And, and then we need to um, define what we are trying to optimize first. And based on that, uh, we construct hypotheses. And um, after the hypotheses, we're testing the, the UX uh, piece comes into the picture. And um, <clears throat> Just a continuous cycle, as I mentioned, the prioritization, aligning the goals, and testing again with the uh, in infinite loop. And that's the critical for the success. I'll talk about it, uh, how we're utilizing uh, user testing uh, and the prayer portal. And currently, we have 300 hours of uh, researcher time with user testing, which yields us uh, 16 to 20 uh, managed tests by, by them. So we basically tell them our uh, objectives for the test, and then they executed everything end-to-end -end and generating a, um, a report either in-depth or uh, executive summary. We find it very useful. And uh, we're using the combination of this because um, the one of the reasons uh, it's very useful for us, I actually want the product managers and anyone in the organization pretty much, if they want to test something, they can directly communicate it um, uh, with the user testing. We have the roadmap, of course, put it on the roadmap, and then they can collaborate with the user testing. The professionals can uh, execute it. It's an extension of our uh, user experience um, efforts. I think it was very helpful. Apart from that, we have 707 credits, which means 770 users that we can test. This yields 50 to 70 uh, user uh, testing, depending on how many people we include on the test. Uh, we start, depending on the project, either 5, 10, or 15 people, um, not more than that, because um, I think even five people, uh, Nielsen and Norman mentioned as well before, it's enough to get the 90% of the old issues within the product. But 5, 10, or 15 is the, uh, the numbers that we usually go for any test that we run. And um, we're creating a testing roadmap with, uh, between the pair, pair portal and the user testing. These are um, quarterly revised, and then we um, utilizing the researcher hours, defining what are the tests that we're going to execute it over time. I think it was very helpful as well. Who run the test? As I mentioned, the product managers, designers, uh, UX professionals uh, are involved on designing and executing the uh, user testing. I've seen it a big success when the more people are involved, and then when they see it, how the user has interacted with the site, and then uh, they understand more, and then it's actually inspired them to come up with something even better. And I've seen so many surprises as well as they watch the videos. And the results we share um, among all the stakeholders. Uh, if the executed by uh, user testing, we have the um, a summary, and uh, we share that summary, and everyone reads it. Um, the results are available within the organization. Any can, anyone can access it and read it. Transparency is important, so we can be aligned on the um, same goals. So moving on, um, how we use the user testing a little bit more. Um, we, uh, we test pretty much uh, every stage of our development, uh, starting from the pro prototype testing before we sending out to the development and the design. And um, during the development, we test as well. We also test on the mobile web, uh, regular website, desktop site, uh, mobile apps as well. And um, we, we tried also uh, for testing our TV commercials, which was also good. I will talk about that case study. It was interesting. Replacement of a traditional focus group is another one. And discovery test to, um, to find out uh, users' uh, struggles, and that's a uh, discovery test. We also tested for um, new product and feature test and use it for the competitive benchmark to compare ourselves for, for the other websites we consider as a competitor to us. So best practices I discovered over time with the user testing and uh, we discovered as a team, um, I think the most important to have a clear objective before you're running the test and uh, design your test according to that objective. So prioritize the test and based on uh, to impact to the business, which is the key, and 
uh, end user as well. So um, layout is ideal uh, customer journey first. You need to know uh, define. You need to know how your customer ideal in ideal scenario will interact with your products. That that will be important to have a, as a benchmark. So you can, uh, when you watch or when you re, uh, read the user testing reports, you can compare it against your ideal scenario. Um, again, testing early during development, prior to release, after release, and test often. That's definitely another one. Retest over time, six months or one year later, because trends are changing, uh, user behaviors are changing, and new uh, UX paradigms are introduced, and um, new interaction patterns are coming up. So testing things over uh, six to one year, um, it can reveal new insights. It <clears throat> Also, when you're designing a test on the user testing, um, keeping the question generic and um, uh, instructions very specific is very useful because uh, users tend to uh, skip some of the, um, uh, the questions because you are not there in present and then they, they follow the script. It's having a, a descriptive and specific script is important. Repeat some of the instructions during the, uh, the study. Um, even though you mentioned in the beginning, it doesn't uh, mean that they will remember during the test. It's always good to repeat it and uh, after a couple questions later, just to remind it. If they are off track, they can go back and then continue where to um, achieve your objective towards uh, to, to your objective. And uh, it's also important to comp uh, document the results, create an executive summary, and share with finding with everyone. If you don't have an enterprise account, obviously they will not, you will not be able to create a report. But you create your own report based on the learnings and share it through the company wiki or um, any other common medium. This is important because everyone needs to be aligned, and then UX is a continuous effort, needs to have a continuous support from executives as well. And consider the bias feedback that you might get from user testing. Um, I tend to ask the similar questions or the uh, critical questions uh, multiple times during the study and um, validate the feedback. So if the same user is giving a different answer for the same questions, when it's asked differently, I, it's a red flag for me. And then I continue um, with the different studies as well, different recordings. And also consider the uh, starting bias when you do competitive benchmark studies. So when we compare it our sites with the other sites, we usually randomize the order. If you started with the ABC, uh, create another test, start with the BAC, and create another one, start with the CBA. This is um, some of the best practices um, we discover over time. It tends to work best for us. I'll talk about it, um, user experience design life cycle. I and within the fair portal, I uh, like to simplify it as much as possible. I keep it as three steps. First one is the um, discovery uh, stage, which uh, we discover um, what we're going to do and then this, uh, define the strategy. Second follows the requirement and flow. In this stage, we work with the product managers to um, write up the requirement and then define. Uh, we, we create the flows as well, how it's going to work. And the third stage is uh, we create the wireframes and then uh, high fidelity, uh, low fidelity, and high fidelity mockups. And we do validations with user testing or um, any other test. Moving on to um, the projects walkthrough. The first one um, I want to talk about it today in uh, the context of those three steps is the predictive home screen, um, uh, which we launched on Chipoyer mobile app. It was we started with the discovery stage and then trying to address the following questions. Uh, what's the vision? Why we are doing uh, this particular project? And uh, what are the goals and objectives? How we can measure the success? Um, user, user research and testing, what we did, and al align the uh, predefined personas. Of course, part of our uh, branding guide, we define it uh, personas based on our demographics. And uh, we're trying to uh, align all the projects with those demographics personas. So in this stage, we utilize the several things. Um, I mean, if we look for the uh, feedback from the users, they, 
reveal some insight what they are expecting for from us and the next uh, as a product feature or the new and that help us to define the strategy as well and also uh, brainstorming sessions with the several team members and uh, research and discovery sessions with the user testing these are the three three things that we utilize and we move on to the requirements and flow we define the um, the requirements itself and then phases to the project in this stage as I mentioned earlier we work with the product managers uh, to uh, create this in a holistic view and um, we create the user flow how the user interact and then uh, we define the stories and scenarios and uh, functionality and behavior we created if you think about the product uh, life cycle uh, we run the designs sprint in a ahead of the development sprint so then it can uh, we all the designs are prepared in ahead ahead of time before passing on the development team so mm -hmm. if you talk about it uh, this particular project we identify the stages of the user after they purchase a ticket with us we look for what are the uh, things that you user would need in terms of two weeks before the departure, two days before departure, two hours before departure, during the flight, and uh, two hours after the flight, two days and two weeks. And based on that, we uh, personalize their experience on the, um, the homepage application. So I'll move it on to the wireframes. And usually we create the wireframes first as low fidelity. Um, to uh, nail down the interaction design and then uh, maybe doing some uh, user testing with it as well depending on the project we do uh, user testing on the wireframes as well or the high fidelity prototypes so moving on to um, the high fidelity prototypes this is after the uh, all the grand work is done we create the visuals which um, pretty much the um, we, after creating the visuals, we put them together into the Envision, some tool that we use um, to create an interactive prototype. So then you can actually feel how it works on your phone as close as the real one. Moving on, more screenshots. So I'll talk about it a little bit of here. The first uh, screen indicates that first time customer uh, starts the application. If they tap on the $20 Coupon, we ask them to log in so then we can give them a uh, promo code. Promo code appears after they log in and then they can use that promo code up, uh, on their booking and um, we'll give them a discount that we promise on the promo code. After the booking is complete, the scenario when you, they launch the application, this time what we're presenting on the home page will change where we're showing their upcoming trip and we're showing the critical information uh, for their trip, whether they selected or their seats or um, they um, add bags. Some airlines offer uh, checked bags um, not for free. And then those airlines, if you purchase it ahead of time, you can actually save more money. We do have that as well. And we also offer um, subtle, uh, not intrusive uh, offers, like whether they need a hotel or car rental in the destination they're traveling to. And again, if they launch the applications um, two days before the departure, the home screen changes this time. It gives them a little bit more detail about which terminal to go to, uh, which gate they need to be, and then whether their plane is on time. And also we pull up the weather uh, report on the application from their destination they're arriving so they can prepare accordingly when they land it, they won't get surprised. And uh, they can dismiss these gestures with the uh, dismiss gesture as the same. And this is the project. So um, I'll talk about it another project with how we utilize it, which is a similar um, uh, the concept the, uh, we call it explore tool and I'll walk through the implementation and then user testing results with this one so the explore tool uh, we started again uh, referring back to the uh, the steps before I uh, show the um, software development life cycle we look into the analytics identify the need did the competitive analysis brainstorm with the team form a hypothesis and then decided the feature list and uh, we start with the sketches on the paper, move on to the wireframe, nail down the interaction design, and then 
uh, pass it on the, uh, the, the, the we created the mockups after that we passed on the um, the team to build for a front end engineering team and after the uh, development is done we did a, a extensive QA make sure all the browser and all the devices are working the performance up to mark in terms of speed and so on and so forth and um, we release it in uh, control we release it on a couple servers first and then did an A-B test, user testing on it, and then after the feedback, we tweak it further, release it on all the servers. And this is a continuous cycle. We're adding a new features as we go. And I will walk you through the next steps, the overview of the pro product itself. Um, if you look at it, we're trying to uh, show the best deals to the users uh, the, from their origin to anywhere in the world. And uh, it's easier to navigate. We integrated the profile that so user can create a wish list, the destination they want to go to, and uh, it's responsive. They can access from the mobile uh, tablet versus the desktop. Streamlined integration, user can click on this and then actually make the booking right after uh, the screen, after identifying the destination and time to travel they uh, wish to go. And we can also show the six months of fares for the destination they want to go. So we run the user testing, and then um, we get uh, very good feedback out of it. And then we share the presentation with the um, on the town hall meeting with everybody in the company too. So this is how we also uh, raise the awareness of user testing and show them actual feedback. And we play some of the videos too, and um, it also enables us to find some other things. So we realized. Um, there are some bugs that we missed on the QA, during the QA, and um, it enabled us to see um, the real customer issues and then further um, enhancements on the product itself. And it validated our vision. It's well received from the users that we test. And it's also validated our upcoming um, uh, development uh, items. So if you look into the, this, um, enabled us to see also how different age groups will interact with the tools. And when you design a test, you can definitely uh, define the demographics for all the tests. I would recommend you to with your business demographics so you can see um, how different group of users can um, interact with the tools. So we get really good feedbacks, and I share some of them. Some of them has actually mentioned the, uh, some issues, slight issues with the um, uh, the, the, the tool itself, so we address them as we go. So upcoming features, uh, we were planning to do the, uh, for this particular tool to include blog post, uh, curated article for the each destinations, and weather for forecast for um, along with the, the price forecast, so the user can see not only the cheapest uh, month of the uh, day, but, uh, month of the year, but also they can see what the weather looks like, why it's cheap, is it the best time to go, in a way. And we were also, we are working currently to introduce um, team-based search, like beach, ski, golf, culture, so on and so forth, that, um, and then sort the cities by popularity from the origin. So user suggestions actually align with this, and um, we were very happy with, you know, what we were envisioned, so it's also a good way to validate your um, Roadmap. I'll talk about another project, which is um, wrapping up the, the Explorer tool. This is the mobile confirmation page where we <coughs> where we um, tested two different uh, paradigms. One is the long scroll versus the tabular view. As the social uh, platform is very you know heavily used nowadays, and then continuous scroll is getting um, the new pattern for uh, industry pretty much everywhere. You can find it on the desktops as well as you scroll through. Uh, the next article comes up and you don't even have to click anywhere and you read it through. Similar test that we ran on the mobile website for uh, <clears throat> to see um, which pattern works better for our users. And then we created two different prototypes using the Envision. We laid out all the screens and all the introduction connected to each other. And um, we presented to users. 
One version is a long scroll where you can see the old confirmation. Uh, after you purchase the flight, you can see your uh, flight details as well as some um, other upselling uh, items on your confirmation page. One version, everything was on the one page. The other version, everything uh, organized in a way uh, where you can see the tabs and you can click and more structure it in a way. So we seen 50-50 split between the users who prefer the long scroll versus the tabular version. But when we watch the videos um, even further, um, we um, see some of the recommendations that coming from and then some of the issues from the each uh, prototype that we created. It's enable us to uh, get the best from the each prototype and then combine it into one. And uh, we decided to go, after analyzing all the results, we decided to go to the tabular version. And um, we updated some of the labels where the users are having difficulty. And we created an iterated uh, version of this and then briefly retested. It was well received and passed on to the development team to develop. And after the release, we also monitor <coughs> control the release again, and we also monitor the result. And we've seen an improvement in attached call, where a uh, user, after purchasing flight, they purchase one or the other product, or selecting seat, and so on, upgrading the seat, that kind of features. We've seen an improvement on that one. We've seen um, uh, positive feedbacks coming through the uh, mobile confirmation page as well. That was good, and it, it eventually resulted better customer satisfaction for us. And these are the... Um, the projects, mobile projects, and I want to talk about the TV ad study and the last uh, project walkthrough. So uh, we creating our own TV commercials and we getting better at it as we move on. And we like to do, um, I mean, it's a general practice to, to focus group before creating the user, uh, the TV ad or after creating the TV ad to identify what the users will like. And we did real focus group um, and also I created a version of the user testing where um, uploaded all the videos that we have want to compare against each other and then um, allow users to watch it in different order through the user testing. At the end, we compare, um, if we compare the results was very similar and uh, we comp comparing to uh, user testing versus the focus group, I think definitely user testing is cost effective uh, way to run this and all so the, um, the results can be much faster compared to a uh, traditional focus group. Tested users also, they are not as present at once altogether, so it also um, cannot influence each other. Uh, they cannot change someone else's opinion, so that, in a sense, was great to see the candid feedback without influence from one or the other. And it was geographically diverse. You can actually run it across the United States or even different countries. So it was it was pretty good. But on the other hand, if you look at the reports, of course, uh, we use uh, uh, utilize the researcher to create the report for us as well. But uh, focus group report was a little bit better. But um, format-wise, it has a good format, both user testing and the focus group. But I, I think the format was uh, much better on the uh, focus group one. Um, the one thing that I noticed, particularly reading the reports, the um, focus group was better for brainstorming and uh, getting new ideas uh, from the study. On the other hand, the user testing, as uh, the, everyone is isolated in a way, uh, they were not on the same room or same place, it was um, uh, not as many uh, ideas as the, uh, the focus group had because the people can tap uh, someone else's idea and then build it on it and give even better suggestions, so on and so forth. On, um, one thing was also very good about uh, user testing, to be able to see where actual user are giving the feedback, that you can play the video clips, and uh, you can also share with the executives. I think that was also important. Eventually, when we get the report comparing, uh, it was very similar. So um, that's also another creative way to use user testing for um, different purpose. I think um, I'll talk about a little bit uh, our tool selections. We have uh, multiple different tools that we use uh, with the design and uh, front-end engineering team. So um, user testing is one of them. 
for testing purposes, Envision we're using for the uh, interactive prototype, um, Optimizely uh, we're using for A-B testing, and the Sketch uh, we're using for the mobile development and experience design, um, mobile uh, design as well. And Creative Cloud, definitely we have the full suite and that uh, we're using all the all the products they have. Um, Colorou for uh, collecting feedback from the users and uh, prompting them uh, in the critical scenarios when they're about to exit and uh, ask them why they want to exit. That's very useful. We get um, over 2,000 feedback a day, and it's all uh, very insightful and valuable. Hotjar, we recently also testing Hotjar. It's very good to see how users are actual users are uh, interacting with your site as a video player. I think uh, to be able to see the, how the users are, what they're searching, and how they are selecting their flights, and all those things is very um, insightful. SurveyMonkey, another tool that we use, similar to Qualaroo, for collecting survey, especially our call center agents utilize this after um, the call center um, engagement with the customers, they send it a survey to the particular customer so they can get a feedback back. We can get a feedback back. And Google Analytics, the analytics tools that we use, and Crazy Egg for um, similar to Hotjar, in a way, we've been using Crazy Egg for a long time. It's uh, for heat map analysis and click analysis, Litmus for email newsletters, Balsamic for wireframes, and uh, Basecamp for basic project management for the design, uh, MediaWiki for um, documenting our uh, test results and uh, sharing uh, the best practices, uh, processes, and so on. Cross-browser testing, testing the um, products with the multiple different uh, browsers, phones, or devices at the same time. And Lucidchart, uh, similar to Balsamic, we use it for um, some of the graphics and monitors. Uh, we use it as part of uh, the DevOps team as well. We use it here to monitor our sites to make sure the performance out there. As I mentioned earlier, design for me is how it works. So if your product is not up to mark, super optimized, super fast, then there's something big missing on the user experience. So monitors plays a big role to put a benchmark and uptime and all those criteria uh, stats to it. I think that was all, and just want to mention that we are uh, looking for exceptional talent to join us, so please check our um, careers page and um, hope uh, download our app, make your next booking with us, see how the experience is really is, and please provide the feedback, and we are we can take the questions. Hey, Murat, uh, that was fantastic. Thank you so much for putting that together. Thank you, Adam. It was a pleasure. Awesome. Well, I know we have lots of questions. We had some come in uh, from when people registered, and we have some questions that have just come in, so I'm just going to start throwing them out at you. Uh, the first question is, what are your plans for your UX team over the next one to three years? Sounds great. Um, so. We are uh, growing our UX team even further. So as I mentioned earlier, we're trying to integrate it for um, every products and all products during the um, development life cycle. And uh, we will be, uh, we recently hired a great uh, uh, UX director as well. Um, and uh, she comes with the 23 years of experience and we hope we will be growing the team even further. And I think, UX is critical for success on the business and everyone understand in the organization. Hope this answered the question. <laughs> Great. Uh, next question is, how is your team organized? Do UX researchers and designers sit with other teams? So um, I have um, some members uh, sit with the, uh, we have the mixture of both. Um, let me uh, do it this way. We have the product teams, and then each product team has a, a UI designers that uh, working with the developer closely, and they, they cross-report with us with the development team as well. So uh, cross-reporting comes into picture. The designers that clearly understand the objective of uh, what we want to execute, and uh, we run the design um, ahead of the one sprint ahead of uh, the development cycle. 
So then we will prepare everything in terms of the, um, the prototype, how the, um, the interaction will work, and so on. And then particular research that works and sit together with the development, maybe one or two, depending on the situation, depending on how big the team is, make sure that uh, vision is executed um, as closely as possible, co collaborating with the developers and uh, back to the core uh, UX team to make sure the implementation is done right. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then next question is, what advice would you give to emerging UX designers? Sure. Um, I think the advice, um, I see in it a um, couple of things. I can uh, start with the first one would be um, make sure share your results and then uh, sometimes the designers tend to sit at the corner and then they don't really talk about it, their works or um, evangelize their works. I think it's very important to present and regularly and then find an opportunity to show your work and then really important to communicate clearly to everyone because um, share the feedback that you're getting from user testing and if you don't have, uh, let's say, um, if if you don't even have a budget for user testing within the organization that you're working on, try to, you know, start with the basic uh, printout and then grab a couple folks that is not particularly working with the project and then test it and maybe you can record that session and then start with your journey that way. Also, um, I think the UX is also uh, emerging, so I'm looking for the designers to have multiple skills. UX, along with the UX, always good to know the technical, a little bit of technical skills as well. You need to understand technically how the things are working as well. I'm not expecting to be able to person to code or you know um, create everything, but then they need to know the basics in order to deliver great experiences. It again comes to the line that how uh, good design or good UX is, is all about how it works. So you need to be understand how, what the performance metrics and how should be uh, the things are working, uh, how we can make it even faster and uh, continue uh, continuous development I think in, and continuous reading is important. Learning. Okay. New patterns are emerging as well. I, I was yesterday. I was seeing the Google's new chip, where uh, the it looks like it's going to even eventually change the um, how the gesture controls will work because they created another chip. So that's going to be the next UX, I think, <laughs> if you think about it. So uh, moving away from the touch screen, more of a gesture controls, and I think it looks very promising um, down the road. It might be very um, commonly used. Gotcha. Excellent answer. Um, next question is, what is your perspective on system performance and how it relates to UX? Okay, I think it's really closely tied together because that's the one of the reasons that we're using the Monitors tool and um, even the Google Analytics gives all those stats like patch. Uh, for us, the e-commerce website page stats are important. Uh, uh, not only um, not only uh, the bounce rate and exit rate, but also the loading time. How long the page took to load? And these are uh, there are a bunch of other tools out there you can utilize it. And um, depending on the which browser the customers are, your experience that you plan to deliver might be different. So it's really important. And I think the UX designers also need to have basic understanding of how the technology works, especially on the e-commerce area, to uh, validate their uh, visions for different, you know, different type of browsers, different network conditions, different speeds of the internet, and so on and so forth. So again, uh, it is really important, and uh, it requires. That's why the tightly um, communication between the development and the UX and design team and front-end engineering, that has to be happened in order to deliver great experience. Gotcha. And now we've had a lot of questions come in during the webinar. Um, we'll get to them now. If you can't answer anything, feel free just to, uh, just let me know. Uh, but our first question is, do you run user tests with existing customers? Currently, um, so what I've seen it is, um, 
you have this screening question on the user testing. We are using user testing for the uh, test, and then uh, we do run um, some of the questions specifically for customers. I mean, some of the tests specifically customers that used us previously. So there are a um, pool of customers out there on user testing, luckily enough. Um, we are able to test on them as well. And it's insightful, too, because um, they have returning customer to us. And then when they surprise on something that's uh, really important to us, how they're going to react on the new features and new things. And in conjunction to the user testing, we run A-B testing as well for uh, just retargeting the users that are returning customers. So the, the A-B testing tool that we have cookied the user for a year uh, period of time, I think it's 10 years or something. And you can actually uh, create a segment for the, um, you want to test for the returning customer. You're not going to get a feedback, but you can actually see the impact of the results in terms of business. So I think that's conjunction of those two. It's a great, great, great results. And okay. short answer, yes, we do. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good. Um, next question is, do you solicit customer satisfaction feedback? And if so, how do you do that? Um, depends. Uh, do we answer the customer's uh, questions sometimes to reach out to them? Yes, we do. Um, it depends on the questions and uh, depends on the severity. It's actually indicator most of the time to, um, to see uh, what are the opportunities for us to improve further. So we do. Uh, create a test according to the feedback that we're getting. And if it's a pattern emerge, we're getting so many repetitive feedback about particular things, then we take an action on it as well. There is a threshold. We don't do it for all, but the situation. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. um, the next question comes from Nikki. And she asks, what is your process for testing on different devices? Um, this is user testing, or do we talking about the A/B testing, or anyway? I'll, I, in general, I have an answer. I think <laughs> you're user about testing in general. In general, okay. We do uh, multiple different tests. Uh, we have, as I mentioned, um, for basic functionality test of the product, we're using the cross-browser testing, or we have a QA team that verify all different browsers, even the same browser with the different versions as well. We look for the analytics to identify what are the commonly used browsers and test it on those. For the mobile, um, on uh, a similar approach on the mobile as well, mobile devices. But for the user testing, we create, um, when you do uh, the targeting, you can have a segment over there for just particular mobile users or part particular um, device as well. You can identify it that way. And um, so, the mobile traffic is important for us. is uh, It's growing every year, and it's a tremendous growth and tremendous user base for us. So it's, by default, we test everything on the mobile. So it's part of the process, and um, it's important. I mean, mobile first is the uh, approach that we take for all the projects as well. Gotcha. Uh, and now Phil has a really interesting question. Um, how are the results for your experiments stored, shared, and cataloged for future use? Is there a common format that these write-ups use? So um, the results for, um, as I mentioned, we have an internal wiki accessible for uh, internally for the organization. We post it up there for the a B test that we run. We uh, write the hypotheses. We take a screenshot while we're testing. And uh, we even sometimes put the code as well, what we put it on the test and result too at the same time. And uh, for user testing, when we create a report or we get a report from the user testing itself, we put it on the Google. Uh, it's accessible for everyone in the organization. Uh, we use uh, Google Drive, uh, Google Enterprise as well. So um, anyone can go and see it. And uh, part of the process, um, depending on the project, we have uh, town hall meetings or um, we have uh, weekly product I mean, meetings, product meetings. We present it there as well for the results, for the key stakeholders in person. OK. okay. Um, 
And then let's see, next question is, how do you manage situations where user feedback significantly differs from stakeholder opinions? Um, well, there are, uh, <laughs> there are scenarios that might have happened, but uh, I mean, when the results are present, we go by the data. So there is no emotions uh, when we run the products uh, or um, any business here. So everything is data driven at Fair Portal, and luckily there is no uh, major um, difference between the uh, you know executive and uh, the result. But I understand that might be happening in some companies. Uh, my uh, suggestion for those would be. Um, show uh, not only the user testing, but trying to do the similar um, things that uh, what the users are suggesting. Create that experiment as an A-B test experiment, which is uh, using either Optimizely or some other A-B testing product. And then show the results to what's the impact of the bottom line to the uh, business owner, stakeholders. So, and then they will they will be aligned when they see the results. And if it's not uh, matching with the, what the customer feedback is selling with the business impact to it, then that customer feedback might be, might, might be um, validated, need to be validated again. So you can do user testing for those to validate those customer feedback. Because as I say, mentioned before, you might be a little bit careful about the bias feedback, and um, you will get it. So ask the same questions multiple times, that might also reveal different answers. So hope this answered and the question. When yeah. you're giving feedback to the stakeholders, is that usually in the form of like an executive summary, or are other teams ever watching some of the user videos, the user tests themselves? It is um, for the executive summary for the stakeholders, but depending on the uh, the person's role. So if it's like a VP level or you know a C level, definitely executive summary. And if it's uh, the the manager role or anyone uh, product manager to developer, they can have actually play the videos. They get the um, the links and details in, in depth, and they can actually watch. So I also do uh, once in a while we get everybody in the team. Uh, the similar roles, and we play the videos on the um, big screen so everyone can watch it, and there is no play to escape, so <laughs> they have to watch that then. So that, that's also <laughs> useful. <laughs> gotcha. And I think, um, I think before we, we, we came on, we were talking, I think you were like the second uh, UX developer or something like that, is that correct? Um, yes, At Fair the, when I joined, yes. Um, when I joined, I was the second uh, uh, designer and developer in the team, and we have a big team right now, So, and we have growth tremendously over time as well. Gotcha. Thanks for this all question, the booking we're getting. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the next question is kind of along those lines. of How many people um, would you suggest for a UX team for an e-commerce company with 30 employees, and with six of which are developers? Six of which is developers. I think for six people, developer, I think one or two uh, UX resource will to start. I mean, I'm differentiating between the UX resource and the visual designers. So um, I assume that these resources will have the capability to run uh, user testing in a way to design a test uh, has a capability of to run user research as well as the interaction design and wireframe and so on. So I think. Um, Six to one is a good ratio. If you have six developers, one developer and one UX uh, person can work with those developer, and then you might have another UX person where can work with the executives and then the other folks to, um, you know, in collaboration with the development to test upcoming items, which is uh, uh, validating the uh, product roadmap and then maybe uh, finding out the new uh, features that is uh, expected from the users and so on and so forth. Okay, excellent. Um, and we'll just handle just uh, one or two more questions for the end of the hour. Um, mm -hmm. Next question is, how do you ensure that your mobile and web apps are unified and experience for a user? Mobile and uh, mobile app and mobile website? Or yeah, I think your website and your mobile app. So uh, 
I can show we have a branding guide for that one. We define the colors and uh, uh, we have the UI kit as well. We define uh, those. I think having standards are important, but as the teams are growing, um, so there will be some, uh, uh, you know, some differences between one or the other. And there are two reasons for those. Uh, one of them is that interaction needs to be different uh, between the devices. That needs to be considered. But the look and feel in terms of consistency has to be enforced. And uh, you need to have a QA resources, at least, uh, to verify and aware of these standards and guidelines. So we created those. We put it in place, and we share it with the, everyone. And it's the continuous uh, effort, because it needs to be updated every three months to six months. And then as the business are developing, some of the applications are you know, uh, catching up always. They have to do re-architecturing from, and then all of a sudden, half a year, uh, we need to do re-architecturing rather than updating the uh, certain things. So there are uh, challenges like that comes up as well. But eventually, I think most important to have uh, the standards is written. You create a brand guideline and uh, UI kit and interaction kit, then uh, share with everybody with the organization, especially for the developers, and uh, make sure the QAs are also trained and aligned to verify those items, then you will eventually get there. <laughs> we still have some inconsistencies. So. Gotcha. Yeah, I think it's a struggle for everyone. Um, all right, and we'll finish on a, a question about Lean UX and Agile. Um, Mark asks, when you say you do lean UX, are you trying to fit all of your UX work within two week sprints? As I mentioned, we have the, um, the, the design and UX is running ahead of the product uh, development sprint. So depending on the projects, yes. And depending on the feature, yes. But we don't uh, release every two weeks. So depending, we have a two week sprint. We create uh, some of the projects is like an epic and then it needs to run months. Um, months long. So the continuous effort, we try to fit it in two weeks, as I mentioned. And depending on the projects, it might be a little bit longer. And we try to deliver ahead of the uh, development cycle. So if they running on, let's say, development team running on Sprint 12, uh, design would be running on Sprint 13, for instance. And then 12, uh, Sprint 12 items are already delivered to the product managers, and then embedded on the user stories, everything is clear, you have the wireframes and so on, it's defined within there. Okay, and then if I'll sneak in one last question here, Mark has a good follow-up question. What challenges have you faced when working with these agile development processes? Um, well, I think cutting corners sometimes needed, um, so those are uh, one of the challenges, but I mean, it's important to be, um, aware of things needs to be delivered as well because, um, you know, uh, iteration approach is the best in a way. So you can uh, put something out there as best as you can in terms of the good UX experience, good design, good functionality, good speed, and so on and so forth. But the fact that uh, never going to be 100%, so you will aim for 100%, you will get maybe 60 70% quality, and then that's the uh, continuous iteration comes into the picture, so you need to uh, continuously do the efforts and enhance that features. And sometimes it's really great because I think the uh, minimum viable product, if you think about it that way. So when you uh, plan to build something, it doesn't necessarily mean that users really going to use that feature. So having uh, just enough time to spend to put something out there, get the feedback, retweak it, or pivot differently, I think is the best approach for uh, companies, especially for startup. And we still have the mindset of the startup as a big organization, and it's benefiting us for sure. Gotcha. Excellent answer. I know a lot of people have questions about how to do UX within these two-week sprints. Uh, it's a big thing that keeps coming up. So thank you for that answer. Um, <laughs> Unfortunately, we have for today. Don't forget, a recording of today's webinar will be emailed to everyone on Friday. Uh, thank you for joining us today. And Murat, thank you so much. That was a great presentation. And thanks for answering questions for 20 minutes here. OK. Thank you, Adam. It was a pleasure for me as well. And I think user testing is great for um, running these because um, it's 
it's helping the community, I think. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you so much. And we'll see everybody next week.